David here with your Infocom 2023 wrap up. I just spent three days at the show and I learned everything I need to learn to finally set up our executive Let's Do Video boardroom with the latest in conferencing and collaboration gear. Now, the first thing you're probably wondering is, how was the show itself overall? Well, the good news is, it was a success. There were nearly 30,000 attendees and it felt like just from walking, walking the floor, the traffic at the booths, it felt like a normal show again. In other Infocom news, before we get to the booths and the vendors, I've been hosting and moderating some Infocom webinars over the last few months, and the feedback has been so positive that they've asked me to host and moderate some sessions in person at the Vegas event next year. So the streaming video production track, um, I'll be up there hosting and moderating some sessions. I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Now on to the wrap up. Okay, here's the deal. I talked to over 20 companies. I, I went to so many booths. You don't need to know everything that every company is doing. That's well, that, that's my job. So I'm just going to try to tell you one cool thing, one thing that I thought was interesting at each of the companies. We're going to go in alphabetical order. So we're starting with AIMS, where I talked to Andrew Starks. AIMS stands for the Alliance of IP Media Solutions. And the reason I found it was interesting is because, well, I'm always interested in better interoperability and open standards help provide that. This might be a bit of a tangent for me from the collaboration space, but I deal with media over IP all of the time. The issue is there's a lot of media that was on, well, other things that's coming into IP now. And if everyone does it their own way, well, that's nice for innovation, but everything doesn't really work together well. If there's some sort of standards, if there's some sort of guidelines, then we know things will work together better. And one final note, another reason I like open standards, when you have a community where a bunch of companies are contributing, the standard tends to be good. You have a lot of people who know what they're doing contributing to it. It winds up being an efficient standard, winds up being a reliable standard. If you're new to the industry, it winds up being the protocols, the standards, the, the technology that you want to use anyway. So I said every company I talk to, I'll get one cool thing. The one cool thing about them that I took away is look at the companies that they're already working with, their existing alliance members. These are companies in our space, so this is something that we want to keep an eye on and something we want to be paying attention to. Next we have the Aver booth, and this one's actually tricky. You might think the one thing would be their camera for every room. They had this great wall of cameras here, and you could see for every size space, they, they have a camera to capture the area. Here I am with Carl Harvell. He's giving me the booth tour, and he showed me, you know, various cameras and how they work for different spaces. But the one thing is actually kind of a, a secret sauce, how they make all these cameras. They have a, um, they have a program, they do OEM, they can make cameras for anyone. This is also, this is the other side of their booth. These are Aver cameras, but you'll see them at other booths at Infocom. You know how it is, everyone is doing video now. Every vendor has to have video for their customers and everyone can't just suddenly ha make a manufacturing uh, facility to make cameras. But Aver has one. So they're able to not only design anything for themselves for every room, but customers can come to them or, or other vendors, I should say, can come to them and say, design something for us or use our design. And um, I have another video I'll put in the link. Um, I'll put the link below, which shows their manufacturing facility. So, so that is the, the one thing for Aver. Next, we have Barco. Tyler West showed me a bunch of things. They had a big booth. They have all sorts of technology. But come on, you know, you know I'm going to talk about the ClickShare, uh, mostly because I've never really talked about it before, and it, it's, it's worthy of being talked about. It wins award after award at show after show, year after year, and it deserves all of it. Uh, it solves such an easy problem. We all have rooms like this, our, our beautiful, again, our fancy penthouse boardroom, and our PowerPoint, our stuff is on our laptop, and there's this big, expensive screen behind us. We want to put our stuff there and there's cables with the wrong kind of connector. And this is just a really, really elegant way to solve it. It's USB. If your laptop doesn't have USB, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're the problem. And it's a big button. And what I love about it, it could have put a little switch on it. It could have been a little thumb size button. They purposely made it as, as big a button as possible so you won't be scared to use it and, and you could figure out, press the button. It makes me think of, it's a little cheesy, but uh, the old, Ren and Stimpy thing. The beautiful shiny button, the jolly candy-like button. Will he hold out, folks? No, you can't. You have to. You have to press the button. 
So of course, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the click share. But the one cool thing, the one one takeaway I have from the booth is that the click share does conferencing now. We have wireless conferencing. It's one thing to put a PowerPoint presentation wirelessly, but you know, wireless can be a little finicky and video conferencing requires a, a, a kind of solid connection. So they now have, uh, she has Teams on her, <laughs> on her laptop. She pressed the big button. And now Teams is on the big screen using the nice big camera and the nice big um, um, speakers and everything else on there. So wireless conferencing through the ClickShare definitely uh, is, is, I thought that was pretty cool. Next we have Bose. There's a lot of video bars on the floor at Infocom, but Bose is known for their quality design and, and for their audio. So of course theirs is going to be interesting. And they have the bigger one and the smaller one. And I actually got to check this one out for myself. They sent me one. I did an unboxing video and I'll put the link to it below so you can see what I thought of it for yourself. Uh, instead of me spending more time in this video, you could just watch that video. And my one cool thing, my one takeaway is just that I like having companies like Bose, companies from outside of our industry that do more things, make other products, audio products, cool products, come into our space and, and make things interesting. Cisco had me meet with Chris Barwick and Tom Richards, and this was a higher level discussion than the latest features at the booth. We all know Cisco makes great hardware. We all know their video bar is not gonna just be another video bar. The real story here is how WebEx fits into the new world of Microsoft Teams and Zoom. The one cool thing, the one takeaway that everyone has from Cisco is the fact that there's this new partnership so Microsoft Teams works on some Cisco devices and not with having to reboot and put it in a special mode, you could just make a Teams call, get out of the Teams call and make a WebEx call. That's a game changer and that's the big story. But what does this mean for the future of WebEx? A few years ago, I, I, I would have said, okay, we're just gonna shift to Teams and Zoom, but they've done a lot of development on WebEx and everyone, you have to admit, it's a competitive product now. So Cisco has a competitive, and that's not a trivial thing. There's a lot of companies out there trying to make competitive products with where Zoom and the Microsoft Teams experience has reached. It is not easy to do. Cisco has the resources. They have the, the money and they have the video uh, the video coding expertise. They have the Norwegians. So they've done it. They, they've purchased products to add event support. They've updated the webinar. It is now a competitive experience. So what should they do with it? It's a really tricky situation. I'm going to have to have the people from Cisco back on the show. I got to see right here for them so we can dig into it deeper. Next, we have Crestron. Crestron's booth was approximately the size of my hometown. I mean, you can easily get lost in there. So picking out a one cool thing is not easy to do. They do a lot of things, but I really like this Crestron desk queue. This little device, it mounts under a desk. Let me scroll up so we can see a better picture under the desk light there, and it's for hot desking. I love the concept of hot desking, and this is a cool way to do it. It lights up red if it's taken. If it's green, it's got a QR code on it. You scan it with your phone, you reserve it for whatever time, and then it turns red when it's when it's yours. Okay, so this isn't the most revolutionary technology you're gonna see at Infocom or, or even at the Crestron booth, but I like the concept of hot desking, and it just looks cool. If we're gonna go back to the office, it's 2023. It should kind of feel like Star Trek. It kind of feels like Star Trek. Next, we have Epos, another company known for audio coming into our space. I had a great demo of their new headset. We were 30, 40 feet away in the in the convention hall, connected to with Bluetooth to our phones, and I couldn't hear any of the uh, any of the noise from the show floor. It was blocking it out locally through through my headset, and it was also blocking out coming through the microphone of the person I was talking to. We've all had the audio reduction uh, demos, but it was still impressive. And of course, they're in the collaboration space. They have cameras. This is their Expand Vision 1. And uh, again, I don't have to tell you about it because I've already done an unboxing video for it. So I'll put a link below and check it out and see what you think of it for yourself. Next, we have Heckler. I love this kind of stuff. Uh, I think a lot of video got set up over the pandemic really quickly. We have a lot of cable management to do. But I like things that look like they're on purpose. And Heckler has these AV credenzas, these wall structures and and they brief me on it it's a lot more to it than you think it's not just oh yeah if you turn it around it has some cable management stuff it has a lot of really unique things that make it easy to install easy to manage and uh and, and it looks like it's again it looks like it's it's on purpose so another another cool company to check out oh and the the one 
cool thing, the one takeaway. I was interested in this kind of stuff, what the heckler people wanted to talk about. They had this new podium. I, I think a lot of my viewers are probably uh, integrators for the AV space, so you do podiums for classrooms, for, for, for uh, religious spaces, and this thing was uh, this thing was really cool. I mean, again, not just cable management and, and nice controls. They really, they spent a lot of time thinking of a, a lot of... I don't need it, but I want one. I'm like, can I have one? I'm like, they're like, you don't need this. It's it's for, but it, it was pretty cool. So the one thing is this this cool new podium thing you have to check out from Heckler. Next is Jabra, another cool audio company to come into our space. And of course they have a video bar, but what makes them different is the Panacast. I've been a fan of the Panacast since before the Panacast, before Panacast was acquired by Jabra. It's, it's a different approach to a problem that we're all trying to address. And that problem is how do you capture everyone sitting at every chair in your meeting rooms. And the traditional approach is just have your camera zoom and pan and tilt around, you know, voice switching or whatever it takes to, to capture whoever's talking at the time. The way the Panacast works, it is three cameras and it just kind of captures everything and then deals with it in the software afterwards. An interesting, unique approach and they put a lot of development into it. This is not a new thing. This is not a beta. So it works really smoothly now. It's been years they've been working on it. It's really fine tuned. And my one cool thing, my one takeaway from, from my visit at Jabra was I met their video evangelist, Josh Blaylock. And uh, I think he's going to be a great guest to have sit right over here and tell us more about Jabra's you know, plans for the collaboration space. The next company I talked to is called Just Add Power. I was talking about media video over IP before? Well, it's one thing to put it on the network, but how do you get it to the display? You need receivers. The one cool thing about this company is uh, Taft Strickland, uh, his business card was a guitar pick. So we're gonna have to have this guy on the show uh, to talk guitars with us and tell us more about Just Add Power. Next we have Legrand. Legrand has this virtual booth tour on their website, so let's, let's use it. And, and it, it's kind of helpful because it really isn't just one booth, it's like five booths. Legrand keeps buying companies. So I had uh, quite the tour. I learned quite a lot and finding the one thing, let's see, I don't want to spend too much time clicking through here, but let's see if I can find my way to my one thing. All right, this might not seem like the most interesting thing in the world to everyone, but cables, cables are an issue. Uh, I, I actually had a production client and, and we had to find special cables because we had the cameras on one side of the hall and we had our production equipment on the other side of the hall. And I learned that uh, HDMI, USB, all of this stuff, you can't just get an infinitely long cable. Some of them are really short, so you need powered cables, special cables. It's a thing in our industry. And um, when I saw it here at the Legrand booth, I was like, aha, <laughs> that's part of our world. So it was the one thing that I took away. Um, but there's so much more going on at Legrand. I really feel like th this is doing it in, in an injustice. You should check out this website. I'll put the link in the description below and, and cruise around and see everything they had for yourself. There were a few things I liked at the Logitech booth. They had a great demo of Logitech site. It's a new center of table camera. It might finally be time for those. They have a new rally bar for mid-sized rooms and a new Logi Dock Flex. So you're probably thinking this is gonna be my one thing because you know I love cool hot testing technology. But the one thing is I had this great opportunity. I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Scott Wharton. Now a lot of people think of Logitech as this bigger company. They make a lot of mice and keyboards, but the business unit, which Scott heads, is a $2 billion company within itself. So I could have asked them a lot of things. I could have asked them about, you know, obviously a lot of questions about the future of hardware. And before before coming to Logitech, Scott founded and took to, uh, took to a successful exit a software company, a, a video software company. I could have asked his opinion on what some of the software companies are doing. This could have been a really insightful interview. But <laughs> to be honest, I was so happy to sit down and relax. It just turned into this casual conversation. And I wound up talking to him about content creation and, and Twitch and YouTube. And we had a discussion about Mr. Beast, who is the biggest content creator on YouTube. He's got 160 million followers. He did a video a few weeks ago where he got 150 million views. He spent, I guess, millions of dollars for some surgery. So a thousand blind people were able to see for the first time, which is amazing. But I'm sitting there thinking to myself, all of a sudden, Oh my God, I'm sitting here. I'm having an opportunity to talk to Scott Warden and I'm talking to him about Mr. Beast. Uh, 
but fortunately Scott said that he loves doing video interviews and he's happy to come on the show so we'll get him right here in this seat and we're going to ask him some relevant uh, questions. Um, maybe you guys can all send me some and uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to Scott again. The next booth I was at, because of course I went to them in alphabetical order, was the Matrox video booth where uh, Rob Moodley shared the latest products with me. Uh, again, we're talking about video over IP. It's not just as simple as sitting at your computer and saying video go here, video go there. So we have uh, decoders. And my one thing that I thought was interesting was these video cards. Now, for the video work that I do sitting here at my desk, I don't have my monitor just plugged into the, the, the motherboard of my computer. It's not powerful enough. I have a separate video card to process video and my monitor is plugged into that. But what if you have a big video wall? You need a special video card that can support it. I, I, didn't, I never thought about it, but of course, yeah, these things have to exist. And, and this is their new card they, they were showing at the show. Um, and that's my my one thing. I thought that was pretty cool. Max Hub. Oh my goodness. My good friends Amy Phipps and Charles Montoya are taking over Infocom. The size of their booth was amazing. Now they were in the collaboration side. They were in our space, but they have a lot of other things. They had a massive video wall. It was monstrous. So they, they sort of are in our space and then some. What I find most interesting, you can see I'm scrolling their website. They have a, a lot of collaboration video products. The flat panels. We're all going with video bars because video bars is sort of all in one, but it still needs to be hooked up to a monitor. What if the monitor itself has a camera, has a, a speakers, has a microphone? That's truly all in one. And, and Max Hub is, I don't know if they're the only ones doing it, but they're really one of the few that are, that are pushing this hard and saying, no, no, this is the way our customers want to do meeting rooms. So I find that in itself, that's obviously my one thing. There's a lot of things going on with Max Hub. But uh, for me, I'm really interested to see how the customers, you know, decide whether it's going to be interactive flat panels or video bars for themselves. Neat. Okay, it's going to be tough to pick out one thing that I like from Neat. They do a lot of things that I like. They have center of table. I like center of table. Last year, I was afraid to like center of table. We tried it in the past. It was hard to do, but I think we figured it out. So I like the center of table. I like talking about the Neat frame. No one's even trying vertical. Vertical is really, really tricky and needs doing some cool stuff with vertical. It's worth talking about. They have hot desking. You all know how I like talking about the hot desking technology. But I think the one thing I want to talk about is how my contact, Amy Martin at Neat, her tag, instead of saying analyst relations, said influencer relations. So, uh, Amy, way to call out me and the rest of the analyst community way to call out the entire industry uh, but I, I think it needed to be said i think it's always been true we're going to have some more talks about this but yeah the role's changing social media is what it is so so happy to see uh, you embracing it and i think it says something about neat that this is the first tag i've seen like this it will not be the last and um amy love the purple branding love the purple uh fingernails Purple works for me, so uh, um, I, I definitely would love to <laughs> continue this discussion with you uh, anytime you want. New Riva. Now, this this is easy. Uh, we always talk about meeting equity, and we always talk about the cameras. The cameras have to show everyone in the room as well as the showing everyone at home. Well, why don't we talk about the audio? New Riva has uh, just an, a unique, interesting approach to covering everyone in the room. And the one thing about Nariva is all of the partnerships they're getting. This is what I want to see. Camera companies, you need to solve the meeting equity problem of audio. A great way to do that is partnering with Nariva. Pexip, I had a great conversation with Lauren Eustace. And the big story there, I think we've covered it before. I talked about it in the live stream with Tim, is their partnership with Polly. This partnership just makes sense on every level. I'll put a link to my conversation with Tim about it so you could just watch that. So I don't have to explain it all again here. Uh, but basically, the cloud solutions out there, they they don't serve everyone. There's There are some customers with special needs, and they're looking at Polly to solve it. And Pexip already had the solution. so. Poly branded Pexip solutions. Next at the Poly booth, I met with Rachel and David. Uh, that is not Rachel, but that is David with the uh, Poly Voyager free earbuds. And again, I was fortunate enough to get a pair. I'll put a link below to my evaluation. This video is getting a lot of views. Uh, this These earbuds are getting a lot of attention. They're a very popular item. At the booth itself, they had a, uh, a boomless headset. 
a lot of people just don't like the boom there and and it's a lot harder to make it sound good you have a lot have to have a lot more microphones to be able to have a boomless ver, uh, version of it uh, the one thing that I liked is this new intelligence in their cameras they have this audio fence intelligence already so they don't capture sounds outside of certain areas now they're expanding it to video so if you're in a meeting room and you have things that you don't want the camera to pan to if, if it's gets you know if someone walks over there and the camera's following you could fence off certain areas so that was the one thing I liked from the poly booth. Qsys had a monster booth. I, I sat through some very impressive uh, loudspeaker demos. And the one thing from there is is all of their partners. Uh, Qsys has this, uh, again, you know, video over IP uh, related technologies. But what they do is they, they allow plugins for their partners. So if you have a, a device, uh, some microphone, a system that's connected to their network, you can make a plugin and and their network their systems their control systems will be able to control your device so it's, it's a little hard to explain but it basically just makes it, it means for integrators you could make some cool rooms for your customers uh, a farm av is is a company that works with qsys and farm av made a plugin of of text to speech so the rooms can talk to their customers you know this room is now available a lot of cool things going on with qsys oh but if i have to pick the one cool thing Let's go with FarmAV and their text-to-speech. This next group, SAVE, you could find them at saveav.org, isn't really a company, they're a nonprofit, and they're interested in sustainability. There's a list of sustainable development goals, and one of them is having less of this. Our industry makes <laughs> a lot of this. So the people at SAVE are, are trying to come up with ways that their partner companies, which are a lot of the companies you saw down at the Infocom show floor, can help us generate less of this. You really should check them out. This is this is a, this is a good cause. Shocks, Shocks had a booth at Infocom, just like they had a booth at Enterprise Connect. They are in our space. They have a UC headset, and fortunately, I was able to do an unboxing video. I'll put the link below. And what's unique about Shocks, and I think they're the only ones who do this, it's something called bone conduction. So the headset, it isn't in your ear. It's not over your ear. There's nothing. On your ear at all it just it you hear it through the bones in your head and well you could you could see my video to, to see my full thoughts on it but it really works it sounds kind of like you're wearing a real headset so uh, a, another cool company to, to be in our space and um, why I'm in a movie theater there uh, but the one thing for shocks is just the one thing for shocks sometimes you just sometimes it's uncomfortable to have an earbud it's just, it's just uncomfortable sometimes. Uh, it's nice to have this option. Surge X is our next company. I was actually introduced to this company about a month ago. I was at a local event down in Fort Lauderdale. A local uh, distributor was doing an event and I saw a presentation on Surge X. I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. You could just, you know, not just surge protection, but they're like monitoring the, the power going through the network. Uh, they have a central monitoring system. It's, it's, it's really advanced stuff. But for me, the one takeaway is that is that there's a need for this stuff. I thought power surge, you know, a basic surge protector was good enough, but they showed how it's not just protecting from a, a blast from a, a big surge, but having steady power, having good managed condition power, I guess it's kind of like issues I have with my hair. It has to be conditioned, it has to be managed, otherwise you get problems. And the problems are that your device, which is supposed to last from three to five years, lasts barely three years. And for companies in our industry, I think about like Zoom certifications and Microsoft team certifications. The reason these certifications are so hard is because these companies don't want you to have a bad experience. They don't want there to be a bad Zoom call. They don't want there to be a bad Microsoft Teams call. Call So the cameras have to meet all these standards. The microphones have to meet all these standards. Maybe the power should be meeting these standards. So, so maybe we should be looking into getting our power zoom and team certified i don't know but i'm gonna to have to be uh, paying a lot more attention to what this company does and learning more about why uh power can be the problem next was view all where i talked to anna and to nick mathis and view all again we're talking about media over ip how do you get it up on the walls and the one thing that i took away from view all uh they showed me the software they had the software they had that let, lets their uh customers control which media gets put on which wall and you know i love stuff like that i love playing in my my little home studio here. I love controlling the video, controlling what I do. So getting the hands-on of uh, the view wall software was uh, was really cool. And um, it's it's 
it's designed to be manageable. It, you don't need to hire a, a super techie to run it. So I thought that was the one cool thing about Viewall. And finally, we reached the end of our alphabet. Uh, Zoom. Yeah, Zoom had a booth, but come on. They have their own massive event. Anything amazing, they're going to save for Zoomtopia. So Zoomtopia is where we're going to get the real news. They did have a demo of their uh, intelligent director. I think that's pretty cool. We're all talking about needing equity. You know, the cameras, should they pan around? Should they capture everyone? Should they... Uh, what if just Zoom takes care of it? Maybe that's the answer? Uh, I'm not sure, but the Zoom approach, it does seem to be a good experience. They're... The way that they're panning and tilting and, and capturing everyone. Oh, Google uh, Zoom Intelligent Director and, and, and see the demo for yourself. All right, like it says up there, that's a wrap. That is my Infocom wrap up. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And please like and subscribe.